someone screwed up here. And I'm not sure if it's the FIA or the McLaren or AlphaTauri teams themselves, but well, it's a bit of a cock up. And it's a cock up that might have cost the AlphaTauri team in particular a whole lot of money. Let's set the scene. I'm sure you're probably already familiar with what happened this past weekend, but humor me here. Sao Paulo, Brazil, into Lagos. A gorgeous track that always produces bangers and weird weather. I don't know about you, but I'll take the truncated Q3 because we got to see those gorgeous and bonkers shots when that storm really started rolling in. What atmosphere, what drama. With Charles Leclerc out before the race even got underway, it took until about halfway down the pit straight to get an inkling that this was gonna be a, well, a race of attrition. Magnussen moved over on Hulkenberg, who found himself the meat of a high-speed sandwich for the second time in four races because there was Albon right there on the outside. And then boom, bang, bang, there was a big accident. Albon hits Hulkenberg, which causes him to spin out, which then means that Magnussen goes smashing into him. And then, oh my gosh, Albon's wheel turns into a pinball, bouncing off down the track as everybody else has to take avoiding action. The wheel hits Hulkenberg, then Ricardo, then Piastri, and the safety car comes out, because of course it does. It was a mess. Piastri and Ricardo come into the pits because, let's be honest, ain't no way anyone completing a race with that level of damage, and then race control red flags the race, and everyone comes into the pits. Which is an opportunity for McLaren and AlphaTauri. Sure, the cars are damaged, but with the breather provided by the red flag, They've now got time to see if they can get the cars repaired. They crack into it, they work their asses off to get ready for the restart, and they succeed. And then they find out they'll be starting a lap down. Through no fault of their own, and after the teams had done a mega job to get the cars back out on track. Wait, wait, hang on a minute. Why can you unlap yourself under safety car, but not under a red flag? That's ridiculous. See, that's the thing, you can. And this is where we have a problem because it clearly states in the FIA Sporting Regulations Article 58.4 that at the two minute mark, any cars that are between the safety car and the race leader, or more crucially, any cars that have been lapped will be allowed to leave the pit lane and complete an additional tour of the circuit to unlap themselves. Now this was a pretty exceptional circumstance. We don't see cars being lapped that often nowadays. Not like we used to anyway. And had the race been immediately red flagged rather than allowing the cars to do an additional lap, Piastri and Ricardo would have rolled back into the pits in position, probably still had to start in the pit lane because that damage was a bit too much to work on outside of the garage, but they wouldn't have been a whole lap behind. So, who dropped the ball here? Both Oscar and Daniel were back in the cars before the two minute warning, and I'm fairly certain that Daniel's car was ready to go out. Now Oscar's eh, a little bit more on the fence. They were still working on that three minutes before the scheduled restart. So it's possible they wouldn't have got it to the front of the queue, but regardless, to me, it looks like at least one of those cars should have been able to go out and get rid of the deficit, which is kind of a big deal because Daniel Ricciardo's pace on Sunday was not too shabby, to say the least. Which, considering he spent most of the race stuck somewhere in the middle of the pack, knowing he was basically just getting some track time and gathering data while trying not to get in the way of his teammate, well, it shows that had he been actually able to compete for positions, Alpha Tauri may very well have come out with more than just two points come the end of the race. Yuki was managing some problems toward the end, and he thinks he would have been able to pass Lewis if that hadn't been the case. So I think it's fair to say that with Daniel's pace over the course of the race and with Alpha Tauri's straight line speed with the DRS open, we would have seen a lot of overtaking from Daniel, and I think probably a slam dunk P8 in front of Lewis. Possibly even something higher. Now, had Ricardo finished P8, then yes, that would have pushed Yuki down to P10, but that still would have netted five total points for the team, as opposed to the two they ended up coming away with. It's also worth noting that Daniel had the third fastest lap of the race, and I suspect had he been in the points, he might have had a crack at that one too. Especially considering how kind the Alpha Tauri seemed to be on its tyres during the sprint. 
Now this is where it gets important because Alpha Tauri is currently seven points behind Williams in the Constructors' Championship. So this is actually a huge deal. Heck, if Daniel had ended up in front of Gasly, that would have put them within two points of Williams. And considering Albon's currently a little bit at risk of losing his P10 in Austin thanks to Hass's protest about the uh, Turn 6 track limit situation, well, hmm, you see the problem here, right? Surely somebody from the Alpha Tauri and McLaren teams must have run a control F on the sporting regulations and found the rule that took me all of 20 seconds to dig up. And based on Ricardo's post-race comments, it sounds like this was a decision that came down from the FIA. So they either misinterpreted the rule, which I find hard to believe, considering it's the entire subject of previously mentioned Article 58.4, and it's not really written with a whole margin for interpretation, or they just ignored it. And to be fair, it's entirely possible that AlphaTauri just didn't state their intention to go out before the rest. But in these instances, shouldn't the FIA be double-checking the regulations and sending out alerts through their little messaging system to make sure that everyone's on the same page? To make sure teams under immense amount of pressure that are affected by these obscure and rarely applied rules know to take advantage of them. When there's a safety car, teams don't need to query it. They get a notification stating unlapped cars will be allowed to unlap themselves. It's pretty cut and dry. Well, it's mostly cut and dry. Let's not go down that path. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to calculate actual loss from these kind of scenarios. An F1 race has an infinite number of outcomes that can be decided by the minor misjudgment of a curb or spending a lap too long looking at somebody else's gearbox. Sorry, George. Where could Ricardo or Piastri for that matter, have finished if they've been allowed to unlap themselves? That's a hypothetical that's kind of pointless to ask because we'll never know the answer to that question. Something could have happened to mess up their race again. One of them might have smashed it through the pack and pipped both Alonso and Perez at the post. Maybe one of them causes an incident that brings out the safety car again, right after Max has been into the pits so Lando gets a cheap pit stop and finally gets his first win. Or maybe it finishes in exactly the same order we ended up with. There's no point in dwelling on it because we'll never know one way or the other. But regardless, I definitely think this call cost Alpha Tauri some serious points. Points that could potentially be worth millions at the end of the season. Look, there's a lot of things about motor racing that can be unfair. Particularly when outcomes are often decided by other people's errors or just sheer bad luck. Just look at Alex. Wrong place, wrong time, and a victim of his own good start. But a big part of the FIA's job is to appropriately apply the rules so that what is within their control provides as much equity to all involved as possible. Sure, this isn't exactly an AD21 situation, but this year has definitely put the spotlight back on the FIA, race control, and the stewards regarding their application of the rules. From Chico cancelling his penalty by unretiring and the general problem of collision penalties or off-track overtake penalties being largely inconsequential to drivers in quicker cars to the admission that Max should have had a penalty rather than a reprimand in Singapore for impeding to track limits being a conversation every second weekend. And now, of course, the mess that the lap time deltas caused in the pit lane during qualifying. This year has been a bit of a roller coaster for the FIA. Honestly, I think it's time that the GPDA got a proper seat at the table rather than a somewhat symbolic one. And um, some full-time paid stewards were appointed who have to front up to the media every Grand Prix along with the race director to answer the tough questions. Because this rule, it's right here in black and white.